Hello, this is Dazzling One, and this week's discussion is on the automation of jobs and the rise of artificial intelligence. If you've been following current events, you're probably aware that the well-known robot Sophia was granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia. And this was an eyebrow raiser for many because Saudi Arabia is not known for giving their female citizens a lot of rights. Just next year, will they be allowed to drive? But this robot, this female humanoid, doesn't even wear a hijab and is granted citizenship. And to get citizenship in Saudi Arabia isn't easy. So some feel that this is moving towards the transhumanist agenda. Even the name Sophia has Gnostic ties to it. Those who believe in Gnosticism see Sophia as the bringer of knowledge who freed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and God's wife. If you've watched Sophia's interviews and seeing her joking about destroying mankind or on Jimmy Fallon and just how awkward that all was, you're probably thinking this doesn't seem too good. And I'm with you on it if you think that. Or you might think I'm being an alarmist and you're skeptical of this AI takeover. However, the automation of jobs is a very real problem. And some will say, well, this has been a concern since the time of textiles in the 19th century. People thought that those textiles were going to steal their jobs. There's always this fear that machines are going to take over and we're going to have a Terminator type of dystopian apocalypse scene. Between reading an article by The Guardian published in June of 2016, which I'll read some excerpts from because it's quite lengthy, and if you want to read the whole thing in its entirety, I'll leave it in the description box, and a documentary. I don't think it's on YouTube, but I can put the name of the documentary in the description box so you can look it up on your own time. It's on Amazon Prime. But this is where a lot of my stats and info is coming from. For those who want to know, 47% of US jobs are ready for automation. And according to the documentary I watched, the jobs that are most at risk for being replaced by these machines are dirty, dull, and dangerous jobs, similar to like mining and coal, that whole industry that was shut down due to machineries or things like construction or working in a warehouse. They have robots that can do these tasks. And what's crazy about it is some of these robots are quite slow. You actually could have people doing that job rather than the robot. However, a lot of these companies are trying to compete with companies across seas. And their excuse is that, well, if we create policies to slow down this artificial intelligence takeover, pretty much, that we're going to have to pick up our jobs and move them elsewhere to other nations. So that's less jobs for people here in the United States. So right now, I believe there was a competition between some Amazon workers in a warehouse and their robots. And the robots are much slower than the humans, but still the robots are considered efficient. And they say as these robots evolve, that they're going to get faster than humans and more efficient than them. But according to The Guardian, it takes a different outlook, not looking at like factories and dirty and dull jobs that are more blue collar, but even looking at white collar jobs. And what they deem to be jobs that are most at risk is rather interesting. And Martin Ford, futurist and author of Rise of the Robots, Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future, explains that jobs that are most at risk are those which are on some level routine, repetitive, and predictable. So here it's routine, repetitive, and predictable rather than dirty, dull, and dangerous. Telemarketing, for example, which is highly routine, has a 99% probability of automation according to the Future of Employment report. You may have already noticed an increase in irritating robocalls tax preparation, which involves systematically processing large amounts of predictable data, also faces a 99% chance of being automated. Indeed, technology has already started doing our taxes. H&R Block, one of America's largest tax preparation providers, is now using Watson, IBM's artificial intelligence platform. Robots will also take over more repetitive tasks in professions such as law, with paralegals and legal assistants facing a 94% probability of having their jobs computerized. According to a recent report by Deliot, more than 100,000 jobs in the legal sector have a high chance of being automated in the next 20 years. Fast food cooks also face an 81% probability of having their jobs replaced by robots like Flippy, an AI-powered kitchen assistant which is already flipping burgers in a number of Cali Burger restaurants. Now that part made me kind of laugh a little bit despite how grim it is because in a stream I did, I had a guest on, Jarvis Kingston, and he mentioned it was week two, but I had him on and I asked him about it in more depth. He mentioned that there were robots, Donald, helping with the food. 
But it's not just jobs like being a fast food worker or working in a factory. It's even being a lawyer. That is something you go to school for for about eight years. That is soon to be automated. And what's crazy about all of this is that by the year 2025, one computer will have the capacity of one human brain. By 2045, the same robot will have the capacity of all human brains. And this is done through way of machine learning and algorithms. So we see that these robots are going to evolve and get more intelligent with time. What I found even crazier, and this is for jobs that are safer, according to The Guardian, jobs that are safer involve genuine creativity, such as being an artist, being a scientist, developing a new business strategy. Ford notes, for now, humans are still best at creativity, but there's a caveat there. I can't guarantee you that in 20 years the computer won't be the most creative entity on the planet. There are already computers that can paint original works of art, so in 20 years, who knows how far it's going to go. The second area is occupations that involve building complex relationships with people. Nurses, for example, or a business role that requires you to build close relationships with clients. The third area is jobs that are highly unpredictable. For example, if you're a plumber who is called out to emergencies in different locations. You can see these parameters at play in the jobs the future of employment identifies as at least at risk of automation, which include recreational therapists, first-line supervisors, or mechanics, installers, repairers, occupational therapists, and healthcare social workers. While well, being in a creative people-focused industry may keep your job safe for the next 10 years or so, it's very hard to predict what will happen 20 years into the future. Indeed, Suskin stresses that we should be wary of downplaying just how much computers might change the working world. She says she believes that the 2020s are going to be a decade not of unemployment, but of redeployment. Beyond that, however, the picture is far less clear. I don't think anyone can do a long-term career planning with any confidence, as Suskin notes. We make assumptions about the indispensability of human beings, but machines are already doing things we thought only humans might be able to. They're composing original music, for example, and beating professional players at complex board games with creative moves. They're even helping us with our relationship with God, while the clergy only has 0.81% probability of automation according to the data from the future of jobs, Suskin believes even algorithms might one day replace the ordained. As he notes, there are already apps like Confession which offer drop-down menus for tracking sin. With all of that, while they're saying that those jobs are safe, they're also letting you know that machines are getting more intelligent, as I mentioned with the machine learning. And I remember even a couple of years ago shadowing a urologist, and I didn't shadow her when she was in the operation room, I was on clinical rotations with her. But she mentioned how robots were, were going to help with the surgery. So we have robots doing surgery, robots doing CAT scans, and it's, they're going to implement them in every part of society. And the fact that there are going to be robots that some will go to for their priest, and I'm sure there will be some that people will go to as pastors in Protestant churches. It's just rather gloomy if you ask me. The big question with this transhumanist agenda is what's the end goal? And so, you know, many of us, we get called conspiracy theorists because we believe that this is going to create a society very much like a science fiction novel, very dystopian, where you have this widening gap between the rich and poor, the destruction of the middle class, the robots can't really be taxed, if you think about it, if they take everybody's job. And they produce excess resources for the elites and the wealthy, whereas Regular people are out of jobs. Will that lead to sterilization? Will this lead to scenarios similar to films like In Time, where they try to limit people's time on Earth who are the have-nots? This really can create a class of robots first and humans last. And this is similar to what the days of Noah were like. Now, some will try to say, well, what if we implement an income for just being alive? But do you really think they would implement an income just for being alive when there are people right now who are working two to three jobs and are still struggling to make ends meet? And I know this all is rather gloomy and eerie, but I do believe this is all a part of what it means in the Bible as things being as the days of Noah. And I'd like to know you guys' thoughts on this matter. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next week. Have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless.